Teslas are amazing vehicles on a number of levels. The software in this car is virtually unmatched in the auto industry, and the Tesla app lets you take control of your car right from the comfort of your home, office, or wherever you might be. All you need to do is pull your phone out of your pocket, open the Tesla app, and you can do just about anything you want to do, like turning on the climate controls, unlocking the doors, or even setting the charge limit of your car. But what if I told you that you can control your Tesla automatically in the background without the need for you to even open the app? Well, you can. Now, if you own an iPhone and you have an app called Shortcuts, you can do exactly that. Shortcuts is an app made by Apple that allows you to automate all kinds of things and you don't even need to be a programmer. Other apps on your phone are written to allow themselves to plug into this Shortcuts app to make automating these apps super easy. And for the longest time, this was not possible with the Tesla app and you had to rely on third-party applications to make it work. Now, I put out a couple of videos over the past couple of years covering this process. I will admit that using third-party apps was challenging at best. Unless you were adventurous, it really wasn't very approachable until now. Now, not long ago, the Tesla app updated and it added native support for shortcuts. Now, what do I mean by native support? Well, it means you can do some really cool things to automate your car and it's really simple to do now. And I wanna show you how I use shortcuts in my daily life and how this might inspire you to use shortcuts to do the same in your life. In this video, we're going to cover shortcuts in a couple of sections. First, we're going to cover the basics. Now, we're going to get about as simple-minded as I can get and write a shortcut that will make a car pass a little gas. The function is pretty useless, but the process will teach you everything you need to know to get started. From there, we're going to take things to the next level by chaining together different events from different places to make the car do different things under different conditions. In this case, I want to set the charge limit of my car to 70% during the week to preserve the health of the battery. However, I want to set it to 90% on the weekends to give me the option to just hop in the car on the weekend and go on a road trip without having to worry about charging. Now, having it change between 70% and 90% happens 100% automatically without me having to do anything, which is the point of shortcuts. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves too quickly here. Let's jump in and create your very first shortcut. In order to make this work, you need two apps on your iPhone. First is the Tesla app, which I'm pretty sure you already have if you own a Tesla. Second is the Shortcuts app. Now, if you don't have this app on your phone, you can go ahead and pause this video right now, shoot over the App Store and download it. The icon should look something like this. Let's get started by running the app, and this is what it looks like. Now there's a lot going on here, and I'm just gonna cut to the chase and make this shortcut. Start by tapping the plus button and create a new shortcut. From here, tap the add action button, and then we want to search for Tesla, select it. From here, you're going to see a long list of things you can do to control your car. Now you should spend some time looking over this entire list when you're done watching this video because there's a lot going on there. But for now, scroll down and select emissions test. Yep, emissions test. Now this is going to add that action to the shortcut we're building, but we need to fill in a couple of things. Now for me, I have two Teslas and I need to tell the shortcut what car I want. Now I'm going to select my wife's purple Model Y. And I'm also going to tap the little blue arrow to show options associated with this action. You will see in this case, there's only one option, which is to show when it runs. Now, if you want a prompt to come up on your phone saying this shortcut is running, keep this turned on. But for me, I just want to work without the prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Now you can also change the name of the shortcut and I recommend that you do this because it will help us with voice controls later. Tap the title and change it and I'm going to change it to pass gas. Now let's test it by selecting it. And if you did it right, the car will make the sound. And every time you tap on the button, it will make the sound. So this is a shortcut and I'll have to admit that it doesn't do much but you know enough to be dangerous. Can we say maybe silent but deadly? Okay, let's jump into the next section and do something a little more interesting. Next, let's create a shortcut that will set my charge limit to 70% during the week and 90% on the weekends. And in order to do that, we need to create another blank shortcut, but we're going to start a little bit different. You don't need to know exactly what I'm doing and you can download all of these shortcuts in the description below if you don't wanna recreate them yourselves. 
Okay, let's get started. Now, the first step we want to do is get the day of the week. Now, remember, we want to set it to 70% during the week and 90% on the weekends. To do this, we have to get the date. Do this by searching for an action called date. Next, we need to format that date into a number that represents a day of the week. We do this by adding the format action, and you can search for it. Tap the blue arrow next to the format and select custom for the date format and change the format string simply to the letter lowercase e. Now you can leave everything else the same. The next thing we want to do is put that formatted number into something called a variable. Well, what is a variable? Well, think of it as a container where you can kind of store that number away and then pull it back and get it later. Now, if this doesn't make sense to you, that's okay, just follow along. Add another action called set variable and put it under the format. And we want to create a new variable name, we're gonna call it weekday, and we will assign that formatted date to it. Okay, now we have to determine if it's a weekend or not, and we do this with something called an if statement. Now let's search for that and add that action to our shortcut. And from here, I want to say if, and if we select our variable, that's what we put away in that drawer here called weekday, and it's between zero and five, where zero represents Sunday and five represents Thursday. And I want to set this to 70% sometimes on Sunday and then bump it up to 90% sometime on Friday. So when I get home from work and plug in the next day, I will have the right amount. Now with this if action, there is a section immediately under that that will execute when this condition is true. Now let's add a Tesla command and set charge limit. And with the charge limit, we need to enter in a percent and also pick a car. Now for me, I also wanna see a notification with the words that I wanna pick. And you can do this by adding an action called show notification that I can put in right underneath the action to set my charge level to 70. 100% optional, I personally like it. So I'll add it to the shortcut and I'll set the words to charge set to 70%. Next, there's an otherwise section. This is the section you put when it's not between zero and five. This is day six and day seven. This is Friday and Saturday. Basically the same thing. Add the charge limit from the Tesla app, and this time enter in 90% and select the car. Like last section, I will add a show notification and just say, I'm gonna set charge to 90%. Now, finally, you want to name it. And for me, I will name it set daily charge limits. Again, we will get to all of this later as to why that's important. Tap on the shortcut to make sure it works. Now, I'm recording this on a Friday, so I would expect to see it set the charge limit to 90%. And it did. Again, this shortcut will run every time you tap it. And I will get to automating this in a second, so just please stick with me for just a little bit. Okay, let's change things up a little bit and talk about how to trigger these shortcuts. Sure, you can run the app and you can trigger them manually, but that's not where the real power can happen. The power really shines when you can trigger them with your voice, your watch, or 100% automatically. Let's start by talking about using your voice. You can trigger any shortcut you create using Siri from your phone or your Apple Watch. Simply trigger Siri and say the name of the shortcut that you made and it'll run. Purple pass gas. Now you can understand why it's important that you change the name to something that means something to you. You can also run your shortcuts from your Apple Watch or even use them as complications on your watch face. In order to do that, you need to do a few things. Shoot over to your phone and tap the dot 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 on the shortcut to edit it. At the bottom, you will see an I button. Tap that I button and turn the option on to show on your watch. Once you do that, it will sync over to the Shortcuts app on your Apple Watch. Now, if you edit the complications on your watch face, you will see that you can now select the newly created shortcut. I can now trigger my wife's car to pass gas with my voice or simply tapping a button on my watch face. Now, how convenient is that? I'm sure she's going to think it's awesome and greatly appreciate it. What do you think? All right, well the last way you can trigger your shortcut is automatically, and it's probably the best way to trigger it. And to do this, you need to use the automation feature in the Shortcuts app. Remember that shortcut we just made to set the charge limit of the car? Well, we can automate that to run every day at a set time. So let's do that. All right, in order to automate your shortcut on your phone, go ahead and run the shortcut app again and tap the automation button at the bottom. 
Automations give you the ability to do a lot of different things. And you can see that I have a number of automations set up on my phone. You probably won't have any. Go ahead and start by tapping the plus button. And you can see that there are going to be a number of triggers available to you to trigger any given shortcut. You can either do a time of day or an alarm or when you arrive or exit a certain location. But in this case, we want our shortcut to trigger on a certain time every day. So I'm going to pick time of day. And I'm going to go ahead and select, let's just say noon. Just like that. And we also want to say we want to run immediately. And I don't want to notify when it runs. I'm going to hit next. And now it's asking me to search for that particular shortcut that we want to run. So we'll say set daily charge limits. I'll go ahead and select that. Now you can see that we have our automation. And at this point, I can just close my phone and put it in my pocket, knowing that every day at noon, my automation is going to run and it's going to check what day of the week it is. And if it is a weekday, it'll set my charge limit to 70%. And if it is a weekend, it will set my charge limit to 90. It's done. You don't have to think about it. I've set this up on my phone a long time ago, and it happens week in, week out. Again, happens completely automatically. As a little added bonus to what we just covered, I'm going to show you another shortcut that I use when I go camping that does a lot of things. I'm not going to build it for you here, but I will put a link to it in the description below. But this is a shortcut that I run when I enter camp mode. And it's probably just easier to show you what it does. And it also tells you what it does by speaking. Turning on climate controls. Setting temperature to 65. Closing all windows. Setting charge limit to 90%. Turning on camp mode. Turning Bluetooth off on the phone so the doors will stay locked. Remember to enable this in the morning. All set. Have a good night. So you can see that worked pretty darn well and the only thing that i noticed that didn't work exactly perfectly is it set the climate controls to 64 on the screen instead of 65 honestly don't know why it did that but for me that's close enough it turned on preconditioning it set the temperature it raised the windows it locked my doors it put it in camp mode and it turned off my bluetooth all with me just pressing a single button now, shortcuts are not perfect and you can't do everything. In fact, there are some things that I wish that Tesla would allow. For example, I can't get any real information about the state of the car, like if the doors are locked or what's the temperature inside the car. This data could be very useful in creating some more robust shortcuts, like only preconditioning the car in the morning if the temperature inside the car is below a certain temperature or above a certain temperature. I also find their multi-car support buggy. Now you can technically create shortcuts that reference more than one car in a shortcut, but I find out that if you reference more than one car in a shortcut, sometimes one car doesn't work over the other, which kind of defeats the purpose. Now, in my opinion, the pros vastly outweigh the cons with shortcuts. There is so much that you can do and you're only limited by your imagination. Let me know what you would like to automate with your car. Leave it in the comments below. And while you're down there, do me a favor and tap that like button and please feel free to subscribe. Finally, if you're interested in purchasing a Tesla of your own, make sure you use a referral link. Use any referral link, but if you want to use mine, that would be great. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.